Good afternoon. Development. What is it and why do we do it? We need growth. If we don't have growth, our economy is never going to right itself. The traditional definition of economic development is business recruitment, retention, and expansion. It's the recruitment of new companies to move into the area, the retention of our existing companies and making sure they're happy here in West Palm Beach and not wanting to leave. And it's also helping those existing companies expand and grow so they can create more jobs. This year, 2012, Mayor Moyo and the City Commission decided they were going to do what they could to create 100 new jobs. We did not meet that goal. We blew that goal out of the water. We tripled that goal. With just the companies listed here, we have created over 300 new jobs in the city of West Palm Beach. These are quality professional jobs. We're not talking about restaurant and retail. We're talking about uh, the, the good kind of jobs that we need to continue to focus on growing. Another part of our economic development mission is working with our small businesses and making sure that they have access to capital, making sure they have access to training and education to help them learn how to run their businesses effectively. And uh, also our entrepreneurs. Harvard University this year ranked the city of West Palm Beach as the number one hotspot for entrepreneurs in the United States. Has anyone heard that before? Yeah? Surprise. Yeah, one person. Another key component of economic development is development, redevelopment for the purposes of generating tax revenue. Now we do have in downtown West Palm Beach quite a few vacant lots that are ready to be developed. We also have some older corridors like South Dixie Highway and the Broadway Corridor that are in desperate need of investment and redevelopment. And the purpose of course is to generate tax revenue. Let's take a look at our existing industry clusters that have grown up organically here in the city of West Palm Beach. Of course, we have banking and finance. How many attorneys are in here? Uh, healthcare is uh, another uh, industry cluster. Tourism, entrepreneurs. Where are we heading in the future? Uh, with Rybovich on the north side of town, we are going to, in 2013, start a heavy campaign to recruit more marine industries to locate in the northern part of our city. If you think about the South Dixie Corridor, we had an organic industry cluster down there happen, uh, the Antique Row. And what we're going to try to do is to replicate that on the Broadway Corridor by providing incentives to encourage uh, more subcontractors and artisans, woodworkers, uh, anyone that has anything to do with the high-end luxury yachting industry, we're going to try to create that cluster on Broadway. Digital media and high-tech is another focus. Um, you might have read some articles recently about uh, FSU and digital domain, and I would like to go on the record that uh, I would do that deal again in a heartbeat. There, I said it. Uh, and why? Why would we do that? We're trying to create a brand new industry cluster here in the city of West Palm Beach. And we're not just talking about FSU and film production. We're talking about digital media as a whole. Uh, we're talking about commercial applications for military. We're talking about digital imaging for healthcare industry. This is not something that we have currently going on in West Palm Beach. And in order to attract these businesses, we have to have a solid anchor. And we firmly believe that FSU is the start of that overall economic coral reef. Sure, a lot of you are familiar with Richard Florida, the rise and the flight of the creative class. This is an industry uh, that we're going to be trying to attract into the downtown area. This includes our architects, landscape architects, planners, artists, uh, anyone with a, a creative mind. We're really trying to encourage those people to come into our downtown area and set up shop. And of course, there's small business and entrepreneurship again. One thing that uh, we really have to look forward to, I think, that West Palm Beach has not tapped into yet, is the import-export market. And we're talking about logistics, warehouse, and distribution. And the primary driver of that is the expansion of the Panama Canal. Once that canal opens, we are in a prime location to take uh, full advantage of that. 
We have two deep water ports. Of course, to our north is uh, the Port of Palm Beach. Port Everglades is to our south. We have three international airports here. Uh, Palm Beach International Airport, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami. West Palm Beach has easy access to Interstate 95. We have CSX, FEC, rail. What we don't have right now is the industrial and warehousing infrastructure. Riviera Beach has that covered. But if you look in the northern part of our city where some of our industry clusters currently exist, they're in very bad shape. So as we start to explore the possibility of providing business incentives, I'm going to look long and hard at what we can do to help improve our industrial areas. Oh, economic development. What can we do to make this interesting? All right, raise your hand, the first person who can finish my sentence. The Business Development Board sends all of the jobs to... Oh, yeah, there it is, there it is. How, how many of you have, have heard that before? All the jobs are going to Boca. Uh, some of you are lying. I've had dozens of people tell me that since I've moved here. Um, this is not a conspiracy theory. Kelly Smallridge is fantastic. She doesn't have it out for West Palm Beach. I hear all kinds of rumors. I have people sending me emails, uh, asking me questions all the time, wanting to know why there's a rift. I'm on the record today, there is no rift. Uh, we work together great, uh, the mayor, Kelly Smallridge, uh, Gary Hines, Brian Cartland, they all work with our development authority as well. We have a fantastic relationship. So the next time you hear someone say the Business Development Board is sending all the jobs to Boca, I want you to say yes, but. Let's figure out why a lot of the jobs are going elsewhere. This is a snapshot of the Palm Beach County office market. Right now, nationwide, office vacancy is hovering around 12 to 13 percent. You can see the Palm Beach County is above that. We're around 16.6 percent .6 vacant. And if you look at this chart, it uh, looks like a, you know, a bunch of boring numbers, but we'll drill down into those and try to figure out what these numbers mean for West Palm Beach. This is how we stack up. West Palm Beach has about 12.8 million square feet of total office inventory throughout the city. And take a look at Boca on the left. Now what's interesting to me about this graphic is the city of West Palm Beach has about 105,000 residents. Boca Raton has about 85,000 residents. So if that's the case, why on earth do they have this much more office space on the ground? Really, that's a question. Anyone? <laughs> I have an idea in mind. Has anyone heard of IBM? 1960s, IBM opened in Boca Raton. That was a catalyst project for economic development. You had smaller spin-off companies. You had companies that were suppliers, uh, did all kinds of work for IBM. So they really, over time, built up their office infrastructure around the IBM complex. While IBM may have left, that office square footage is still there. So let's take a look at how we stack up in terms of office vacancy rates. West Palm Beach, citywide right now, is about 15.6% vacant. Compare that to 18.6% vacancy in Boca Raton. Yay, West Palm Beach. We're winning. Um, you can see Delray has uh, a little bit of a challenge there. Here's a bunch of numbers again. Let's uh, drill down and try to figure out what this means. For those of you who don't know, Class A office space is trophy office space. These are the finest buildings uh, that you can possibly have. This is where your top tier tenants want to locate. This will be something like uh, City Place Tower will be considered a Class A office space in downtown. Class B is you know, cheaper, it's middle ground. Not bad, but not great. Class C is you know, kind of bottom of the barrel. It's very average. It's you know, not been fixed up, not been kept up well. So how does Boca compare to West Palm Beach in the Class A office space market? 
keep in mind, again, we have 105,000 residents and Boca Raton has 85,000. But they have 64 Class A office buildings in Boca Raton. We only have 21. There's a total of 7 million square feet of Class A office space on the ground in Boca. That's more than twice what we have here in the city of West Palm Beach. And the prices, Boca is a little bit cheaper. $31 a square foot compared to West Palm Beach is over $36 per square foot. What's really interesting though is when you compare Boca and West Palm Beach Class A and Class C office space. Take a look at the number of lower end Class C office buildings in Boca Raton. They have 178. Folks, we have 537 Class C office buildings in West Palm Beach. We have twice the office square footage of Class C space as Boca. $21 a square foot in Boca, $18 here. If you start looking at this from the Business Development Board's perspective, you can start to see why more businesses are going to Boca than they are West Palm Beach. We don't have the inventory that we need to have in order to attract the companies that we're trying to attract. Right now, the largest contiguous square footage that I have available in West Palm Beach is 35,000 square feet. That's not a place where you put a corporate headquarters. You need 100,000 square feet, 150,000 square feet. Boca Raton has that inventory. The city of West Palm Beach does not. And again, uh, playing off of IBM, Boca over the years has really built up their office inventory. Uh, during the, the real estate boom, the city of West Palm Beach focused its efforts on building residential in their central business district. And that is a very important component. A lot of downtowns will be jealous of the amount of residential we have, but our central business district is just that. It's our business district. You can't run an economy off of condominiums and restaurants. We need jobs, and if you want me to bring jobs here, we need to start building some Class A office space. Another issue that is affecting West Palm Beach is a lack of research institutes. And why is this important for business growth and development? You can look at Scripps uh, and the effect that Max Planck is having on Jupiter's economy. You can look at the number of patents and the spinoff companies that will be coming out of that economic development investment. We don't have that here in West Palm Beach. It's difficult. Uh, for us to compete. And again, that's one of the reasons we continue to remain supportive of the FSU Film Institute because we believe that research institute with FSU is going to help create these spin-off companies. Another key problem we have here is our high school and college graduates are leaving. The type of jobs that they're looking for, high tech, uh, the creative industries, the type of places that young people want to go to work we don't have here in West Palm Beach. We really don't necessarily have them in South Florida. So we're seeing a lot of our younger workforce migrate to other areas like Austin, Texas, San Francisco, Atlanta is a big mecca. So we need to start finding a way to work with our colleges and universities here to make sure that we're providing the type of jobs that our college graduates are going to be looking for. Here's a pop quiz. What does Boca Raton, Jupiter, and Palm Beach Gardens have that West Palm Beach doesn't? Anyone? Beaches. What's that? Beaches. <laughs> That's true, beaches. <laughs> These cities have economic development incentive packages on the table that is helping them to recruit jobs. Boca Raton has about $5 million set aside. Jupiter, about $3 million, and they do a loan guarantee fund. Palm Beach Gardens, their voters there recently approved a referendum to allow tax abatement in the city limits. <clears throat> West Palm Beach doesn't have that on the table. That's a problem. We need to develop a competitive incentive package. I've been working with the mayor and our law department to come up with a list of incentives and we'll be rolling that out in 2013 at the Mayor's State of the City address. And then we'll be passing that on to the City Commission 
uh, for their vote and hopefully we'll get some incentives on the table that will allow me to better market the city of West Palm Beach. Another problem we have, there's little assistance available for small businesses and especially startup companies. Capital is tight right now. Banks are still not lending to small businesses despite what they say. I know, you know a lot of you are shaking your head, some are nodding your head. I hear it from businesses all the time. They need money so they can grow. And right now, where's the Small Business Development Center located? FAU. FAU, and that's in? Oh. OK, well, uh, not for long. We are bringing a branch of the Small Business Development Center into City Hall so that the SBDC can be readily available to help the small businesses in the city of West Palm Beach. Another challenge that we have, uh, I've only been here for six or seven months. Um, in the city, when I came aboard, had no organized data. Uh, I think this is the first time people from the city of West Palm Beach have actually seen a breakdown of their office inventory. Um, you know, there's a lot of other data out there that I need access to so that I can understand what companies I need to go after. Um, we have no economic development plan yet. We're working on it. Uh, it's actually a joint effort between my office, uh, the Community Redevelopment Agency, and the Downtown Development Authority. We're all working toward the same goal. We have a problem here. Um, there's a negative perception, K through 12, and when you try to recruit companies down here, that's always one of their first questions. How's your school system? Now, don't get me wrong, we do have some excellent schools in the city of West Palm Beach, but we also have some problem schools. And it's not just Palm Beach County that's dealing with that, it's the entire state of Florida that is dealing with that. So a company moving down here is going to be very cautious because their employees have children and it's related to workforce as well. That's another question I hear all the time is if I move my company down to South Florida, where am I going to find workers? Everyone's retired. It's perception. We need to work toward changing the perception. Another challenge, seasonal residents. Again, you can't have a viable economy based on nothing but condominiums and restaurants. Our homeowner to rental ratio right now is about 56%. Nationwide, only about 30% are rental. So we're skewed here. And this is a unique problem for the city of West Palm Beach. Um, you're a vacation destination. You are a retirement destination. We have snowbirds, we have snowflakes. And I just learned snowflakes. I thought that was pretty funny. I never heard that one. Y'all know what snowflakes are? Instead of the snowbirds who migrate down for the season, the snowflakes just kind of flutter around and go back and forth all the time. Um, one of the things that we're seeing right now in our development services department and planning and zoning departments, we're getting a lot of inquiries and applications for new apartment complexes. Now, if we're at about 60% rental already, do you think it's wise to approve more rental? I don't recommend it, especially in the downtown, in the central business district. What do we need to see more of in our central business district? Office. Office. Hotel. Don't, yeah, hotel, absolutely. Please don't eat up our valuable downtown land with more rental units. Declining tax receipts. Let me show you what this looks like. 2008, the value of all of the real estate in the city of West Palm Beach was about $12.7 billion. <coughs> this year, your real estate value has dropped to 8.1 billion. That is a loss of over four and a half billion dollars in value. That's stunning. And of course, the city of West Palm Beach is funded from tax receipts. 2007, we collected 88.6 million dollars in tax revenue. 2012, that number dropped to 65 million. It's over 23 million dollar loss in revenue. It's between 25 and 30 percent decline. Raise your hand if you own your own business. What would your business look like if you had to take a 25 percent haircut? I'd be bald. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you in touch with the Small Business Development Center. They'll, they'll help. 
Uh, you know, of course, with less revenue, the city of West Palm Beach has had to lay people off. Since the height of the market, we have lost 258 employees. I know there's a lot of anti-government sentiment out there, but you know, some of the people who have lost their jobs or uh, positions who have remained unfilled include police, fire, EMT, code enforcement, landscaping, and maintenance. You know, these are things that we hear about all the time at City Hall. People want more police. So here's the question. How much new taxable development is needed in the city of West Palm Beach in order to hire one new police officer? Take a guess. What's that? Nope. Higher. Too high. <laughs> 15 million. It takes 15 million dollars in new taxable development based on our current millage rate in order to generate enough tax revenue to hire and outfit one new police officer. And that's with a salary of about $49,000 a year. And here's a question I always like. Raise your hand if you pay too much in taxes. <laughs> Seriously. Raise your hand if you pay too much. Raise your hand if you want more police on your street. Well, folks, this is the gap. You can't have both. And the only way for the city to generate new revenue, you have two choices. You either start approving new development or you raise taxes. So let's get back to business recruitment. The Community Redevelopment Agency and the Downtown Development Authority right now do have some incentives on the table. But just like the City of West Palm Beach, the CRA and the DDA, their income has been dramatically affected by the downturn in property values. So I'm not going to read the list to you, but you can see some of the programs that have been successful in the past. And these are just offered in the CRA and the DDA boundaries. We're going to be looking at some new incentive programs citywide. One of the things you'll be hearing a lot about in 2013 is West Palm Beach Bear Business Expansion and Retention Program. We're going to be working very closely with the Business Development Board uh, and the Mayor to go around and visit face-to-face -face with all of our top employers to make sure that they're happy doing business here in West Palm Beach and that they're not thinking about leaving. And if they are, we'll do anything we can to keep those jobs here. Along the Broadway corridor, I mentioned to you earlier that we're going to start trying to create a marine industry cluster. Uh, we're going to look at a variety of incentives that we can place in the north part of the city and along the Broadway corridor uh, to help encourage those professional jobs to move here. Uh, one of the trends that we're seeing right now, and Rybovich has confirmed this, a lot of the marine and yachting industry uh, is migrating further north to get away from Miami. Uh, you know, Fort Lauderdale is, is one market. This is a different market. So we are starting to see that migrate further north up the east coast. Downtown office conversion funds. Uh, this is something that the Downtown Development Authority dipped their toe into in 2012, and I think it has the potential to be a very successful program. Up until now, the Downtown Development Authority has really focused primarily on ground floor restaurant and retail space, and that's exactly what they should have done to get Clematis jump started and walking on its own. Now the downtown is more like a toddler who's still trying to walk, but they don't need to be bottle fed anymore. So we're going to start focusing more attention on underutilized upper story office space, like yours. I like your space. Um, and again, this is the type of industrial loft, that, you know, wood floors, brick walls that the creative class that we're trying to attract uh, is going to find a home, hopefully. Uh, South Dixie, I mentioned to you earlier that we have the Antique Row cluster down there. Uh, South Dixie has really felt left out, I think. Um, the Northwood area is in a CRA, and the city has been paying a lot of attention to them, and South Dixie feels a little neglected. So one of the things that uh, we're going to be doing is helping the businesses along the South Dixie Highway corridor south of town uh, start renovating some of their buildings. And the city recently 
uh, did make the purchase of the 8111 South Dixie Highway parcel. And the reason we did that is to have some control over the type of development that is going to go on that site. What we're looking for is a higher density mixed use quality development that will cause a halo effect of property appreciation and stabilization all around that project. Some other ideas that we're going to be exploring, um, capital investment program, small business loan guarantee fund, that's something that the city of Jupiter has had a lot of success with. Some other ideas, uh, you know, like I, I showed you in the graphics, we need more Class A office space if we're going to be able to compete with not only Boca, but Fort Lauderdale, Miami, the rest of the state, and the region as a whole, actually. Um, some other ideas, a loan interest subsidy program. Uh, this is something that as we work to try to attract manufacturing to the area, which, you know, we're starting to get an idea that manufacturing is on some small scale starting to return to the U.S. Uh, if we can provide some kind of tax break or a subsidy to help these manufacturers purchase their equipment, we could turn around and make that money back up with personal property taxes on types one, two, and three personal property. Another issue uh, is some of the infrastructure in the city of West Palm Beach. Um, I've got an office developer actually right now looking at a, a parcel downtown to do about 220,000 square feet of new Class A office space, and there's an infrastructure problem. Um, you know, there's some way that the city or the CRA can chip in uh, to help upgrade our outdated infrastructure, then we're certainly going to do that in order to make the parcel more viable for development. Thank you. Thank you.